demonstrated his authority and power. I like the, I like the fact that God is not a show off, but if you, if you let him, he will show you something that your eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart, the thing that God has prepared for them that love it. God is in the business of blowing your mind. He will show off right in front of you. He will show off right in front of the devil. I remember in our church when we first bought it, I used to see dust, little dust and little chicken bones and, and feathers and stuff. The witch was trying to hex us out. <clears throat> and I saw in our yard at our house, she found out where we live. And my dog, we let her out to use the bathroom. And, 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 and they, she went out in the yard and she dug up something and brought it back to me. And I knew, I said, this is nothing but witchcraft. See, when you got power, the enemy wants to silence you. Yeah. Amen. To, to every Elijah and Elisha, there will be a Jezebel that's trying to cast her spell. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, understand? But Jezebel not only wants to cast her spell, but she likes to castrate her men. Yeah. Mm. Take away your fight. But, you know, it, it's been maybe a couple of uh, months ago, I ran into this individual. <clears throat> who was doing this stuff. And to her dismay, she wanted me, me to be broke down, have lost my mind. And I ain't gonna tell you now, it was a fight. If you're gonna step out of ministry, <clears throat> you've got to be prepared to fight. <laughs> There's never an opportunity where you get the tulips, uh, you know, dance through the tulips and smell the roses and enjoy the scenic route. That's right. You got to be on guard and have eyes in the back of your head. You got to use your discerning of spirit. You got to use every gift you got because we're turning the last corner going home and the devil has turned up his real fight. Look at your neighbor and neighbor. You got to use all your gifts and food too to get home. When I saw her spirit was broken. Because ain't that something how the Lord will beautify the meat with salvation? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. He'll have, look, I may be jacked up, but when she see it, I'll look like I'm standing yeah. tall. Uh -huh. And when she looked at me, she got discouraged and tried to attack. You know what? I rebuked her and told her to leave my property with authority. Yeah. Ah! Don't yeah. even look back. She had like a feelings with her. I take no pity on people who try to block and destroy what God is doing. The Bible says that I suffer not for a witch to live. Here. See, what you don't understand is that thing is coming back full circle now. Because people don't have the amenicated goal to stand in your presence and fight you like a woman or a man. They don't, they don't want to go to jail and they don't want to, amen, uh, you know, face any consequences behind what they, what they want to do to you. So they'll fix you, so they think. Fix on, because my Bible says no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. And then for the religious people saying that, well, you better not say that because, you know, you, you they might get to you. Can I tell you something? It, you could be in the whole pit like the prodigal son. You could be down on your luck. You could be drunk as a cooter. Y'all y'all talk like that? Drunk as a cooter. Come on, somebody. You could you could be high as a kite, but you got more power in your pinky toe than all the power of hell sitting there in some type of proclivity. Don't let the devil deceive you. You know, you know the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. But he slept with somebody's woman. Sent the man out. Y'all know the story. But at the end of the day, God had blessed him with the kingdom. I just don't understand God sometimes. Because the church wants you to be shut down. Ain't that right? We got to let people be free to hear from God so they can get to heaven when this is all over. Come on, somebody. I like the way God likes, he just show himself. He, you know, when you're in trouble, you're in real trouble, he'll step right in. Yes, you ever seen God do that? Yeah. That there ain't no way in the ham and cheese that this makes sense to me. But I thank God yeah. that every now and again.
again, he'll show himself. So what he's showing you is his power. Understand this, that, that the disciples, when they, and this is something that I'm sharing with my church. And so if you were ever to go out a, uh, with us to a restaurant, you will see the culture that's in the Rogers family. Now some of y'all are too finicky. But we look like a bunch of country bunkins and hillbillies when we go to a restaurant. <laughs> Mother, you know what we do? We order for each other so we can taste off of each other's plate. Amen. <laughs> now Jimmy is doing the same thing. I drunk a tea, handed it to my son. He drunk it, gave it back to me. We all do the same. Look, he blinking his eyes like, uh-uh, don't do that. That's nice. <laughs> He ain't got no hands. He been wiping the mics and then he's, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> so what we're eating at our church, I just want to set my plate in front of you and just ask you to embrace our culture. Let's eat together. Let you taste some of this, okay? Jesus is in a situation because this is a storm that has and a storm had arisen before, risen before, and the disciples were on the boat with Jesus. And, you know, they almost lost their life, had a bad experience with Christ. It was always in their, it was always in their mind and not in reality. Because oftentimes, God can take you to the brink of the end and still save you. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he will. You feel like you're about to die. The doctor then gave you a diagnosis and a prognosis and gave you uh, six days to live or, you know, or 60 seconds to live. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And one of those seconds is enough time for God to do what he can do. He can be God up to the last minute. You're not happy in here. Turn and, turn, turn and look down your road. If you're the captain of the ship of your road, turn down and say, God can do it in the last second. Look down your road and say, he, he can do it. He can do it. Now. He can do it. Feel something like right this. Make me want to stick my chest out a little bit. Stuck my back on the table. He can do it. They did not believe that God could do it again. Because <laughs> they thought about what they had happened to them. Okay, Jesus saved me, but I ain't want to go through that no more. Uh -huh. You ever had that testimony? Yeah. I don't know. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me out of it, but don't take me back through it again. Yeah. High five your neighbor and say, I thank God for bringing me out. Go through that hell again. Okay, not. <laughs> That's enough, Jesus. But here come Jesus. Like the God he is. You didn't get the lesson? You got to repeat it. Come on, somebody. He said to, to Moses, he said, now, boy, when you get across this Red Sea from, from here to Mount Lebanon, it's a Lebanon danger. All you have to do is walk in a straight line. In 11 days, you're going to end up in the promised land. Somewhere along the way, Rick, they got a little crooked. Couldn't walk that straight line. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you have 11 days in you? Because if you don't, it's going to turn into 40 years till you learn the lesson. Mm -hmm. God's got a way. You could be the only person in kindergarten with a beard eating graham crackers and milk. Come on, I'm sleepy right now. Can I let that? Mm -hmm. God will not let you graduate out of kindergarten until you learn the lesson. Mm -hmm. Look at somebody say, I'm going to get it this time. I'm going to get it this time. Get it this time. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. So Jesus put them back in the boat, my brother. And the Bible says in one, I think it's in Luke's gospel, that he had to constrain them. I love God. Because sometimes he will be the boss. 
Sometimes he'll let you wiggle and you know, you know, you'll say something sassy to God and you'll look and don't know like they strike you. And so you get a little confidence walking with God. He said, go over there and love her. But she put that on Facebook about me. I said, love her. I ain't doing that. And you go on about your business. God said, I want you to sow a seed into your enemy's life. Bless them. Don't curse them. I ain't doing that. But every now and again, God will constrain you. Now, he may not grab your arm and make you do it. Whoop your backside. But he will put a freeze on your favor. What used to work won't work no more. You can't get a prayer through anymore. And you feel trouble in your mind. And you feel like the enemy is creeping up on your backside, on your shoulder. God will be the boss sometimes. <laughs> so, 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 so he constrained them. He said, "Now nah, I'm gonna make you give to her, and you're gonna do it with a smile." Mm. That young man that had the altercation, get a seed and bless him. Amen. Don't let that hold up what God is gonna do for you. Okay, six months. Mm. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that God will make you sometime because sometimes I'm trying to get to this. I'm over here, and then He'll say, uh. and like, "Oh, thank you, Lord. I didn't even see that breakthrough. I didn't even see that that house. I didn't even build. I didn't see that vineyard. I didn't go. I didn't even see the promotion on the job. I didn't see that you wanted me to own this company. I didn't see that you wanted somebody. Ah, I, I didn't see." It. Take your neighbor and say, neighbor, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't, I, I had no idea that God was going to make me mind him so I can get closer to my blessing. Yeah. Maybe not to get him make your mind. So he constrained the disciples. He said, I want you to get on the boat. Y'all going to see me on Facebook Live. Oh, 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 oh. Bring it out, bring it out. Oh, I love that, though. Stay with me tonight. Amen. 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 I love that. We share something kindred in the spirit. Amen. 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 Your pain is transitioning into power. Right in front of you. I hear the Lord say, don't let your age deceive you. Try it again. Well, then. Oh, they don't have church all. Y'all even a bunch of fireballs over here. Yeah, they don't have church by us. <laughs> so he constrained them and they got on the boat and Jesus didn't promise that there wasn't going to be another storm. Uh -huh. like, Lord, please give me instructions because some of us, like I said before, are finicky. We need detail or description. Uh -huh. You're not God. Right. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh -huh. Just get on the boat. Uh -huh. I know you don't want, you know, like the caravans ride, and we may try to go tomorrow if they open. They not they open? open. Okay. Yes, Lord. The, the click, go. click, no. Let's go. The, the, the click, click, the click, click, click. It's too late to get off the ride. When click, 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 you know, it's too late because my wife be screaming, Lord, forgive me, Jesus, for all my sin. Lord, let me off this ride. You get me off this ride, Lord. I won't do it again. That be me. That click, that click, click, get me every time. I got to repent. For stuff I ain't even done yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep me near the cross, Jesus. The Bible says Mary Hart do it good like a medicine. Some of you not laughing in here thinking I'm calling, but you not know that there's a person in here God is flushing cancer out of their system. 
I know what I'm talking about. When I said healing was in the room earlier, I know what I'm talking about. I just look this way. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. And so, so he didn't promise them that it wasn't going to be another storm. So they get on the boat, and I can tell, you know, by, by just reading the text, I can feel it. Did the word come alive to y'all? Yeah. You, you like you can smell the ocean. You can you feel it. You can you this is the ambiance. You can feel what's going on in the boat. And you know how we talk once Jesus seems to be in another area. The disciples begin to talk, man. Because in the ocean, you can't see nothing. That's right. For miles. Mm -hmm. The yeah. sun is hitting you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is sleeping. So we got to talk about Jesus. You know, he let such and such die. I don't believe in healing no more. No, it ain't about healing. It's just their time to go. If God want to heal you, he'll heal you. But if it's time for you to go, you coming on to our boat. You know what? I think we need to stop being afraid of death and have a different paradigm and perspective. Death is the eyes of fear. But healing is the eyes of life. When somebody transitions, you don't see death, you just see life. Clap your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So, my God, I'm starting to feel something creep up on me. So now the storm is getting stirred up. And the disciples are sitting there like, you know, Jesus can't stand when he do this. Just leave us with no information, just obedience to his word. Now, it didn't say, Rick, how long they were on the boat. Uh -huh. The story tells it like they got on the boat, then all of a sudden they was on the other side. Yeah. Giving you this mystical stage of euphoria like God is going to do everything quick, fast, in a hurry. If you know the God of the Bible, sometimes you're going to have to let patience have a perfect yeah. work in life. Turn and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, slow down. Don't get in a hurry. God is trying to show you something. The problem is you trying to get off the boat too early because you think you got something else to do other than the will of God. The devil is deceiving you and lying to you. Where else can we go if we don't go with God? So he gets, he gets him in the, in the boat and they, and they all the, discombobulated. I've always wanted to use that word. <laughs> discombobulated. What that mean? I know. I know. <laughs> so they all discombobulated. But as the storm arrives, they don't interpret it. They say, carous now. Find that weed up, man. He ain't gonna do that. Look, see, look, the weed smokers start laughing. Y'all saw that? Y'all see that? I ain't going at y'all. I'm sorry. I ain't, I ain't going at y'all. <laughs> yes, sir. Care us not that we perish. I see, I see you don't care nothing about us, so we might as well just backslide on the boat with you. Do you hear the indignation in that man? Careless not. That we, you know what? That you when you careless not, you careless not. That sounds like you really. Can I say this? No, you can't say angry with that. You can't say that word. Sarcastic. He was pissed off. Look, is some of y'all like, oh, is that fine in here? He was indignant, like, oh, uh, not that we perish, all right, we up out of this piece. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all know y'all do God like that. You got that bill due and the lights gonna get cut off at you know at 10 30 and you was believing God, trusting God, and you took the last little money you had and sold it. Can we perish? I'm giving a call Ray Ray. I know what to do to get my needs met. See folk over here, I heard some noise. I ain't gonna look. Yeah. 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 Some noise over there. <laughs> you better put that phone down with your call Ray Ray. Call Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. But some of us get to the point to where we say, ain't no way in the world am I gonna wait on God. I might as well get frustrated. I might as well go for myself. Okay, it's not going to perish. So they stirring up Jesus, and Jesus, you know, he ain't really sleeping. The first thing when he get up, he rebuked them for having little faith. Yeah, not having any faith at all, but no faith, because you did have something to get Jesus on the boat. So you got a little faith. But my question is, didn't you just tell us a couple of chapters ago that all you need is mustard seed faith? Then why are you rebuking me, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost? We have a guy in our church that do that. Father God, Holy Ghost, Son, Jesus, thank you. Why would you tell me, embarrass me, say that my faith is not enough? Maybe God is trying to tell you something. If you listen, he's given every man a measure of faith. So if he gives you a measure of faith, what that, it started somewhere and it has to grow. Because when you get to sycamore trees and mountains, you can use mustard seed faith to get rid of sycamore stuff. You sycamore, I'm sick of yours. So he can get rid of it. In the same day, I can rebuke a mountain and the sycamine stuff in the same day. But when it comes to storms, when it comes to storms, that faith has got to be developed. You using yesterday's faith on today's storm. Look at somebody and say, you got to ante up a little bit. You got to, you got to get your faith up a little bit. Because there's going to come a time in your life, baby, to where you're going to face something that is going to take more faith than what you got. And part of the reason why, God, oh my God, I feel it now, that we think that God is not healing. Some of the stuff is not up to God, but it's up to us. If we have to faith. Because it's going to take different levels of faith. It may take it may take some uh, measure to rebuke a storm, but it's going to take more faith to call Lazarus out of a grave, and uh, he's been dead for four days, and he's laying up. Hit me! He's laying up in there. Sick. Hey. God, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I turn it to your neighbor and say, neighbor, where is your faith? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Go look for it. Go get it. And it ain't that hard to get. Because the Bible says that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It didn't say reading the word. It said hearing the word. God made it so easy to get Sit down, I'm going to preach it again. Bring it out, bring it out. Bring it out, bring it out. So, so then Jesus, he's the master teacher. He's the rabbi in, the, uh, in theology. He's not just a teacher, but he's a master teacher. So he steps to the plate. And he gets to the bow of the ship. Uh-huh. He don't even address the he don't address the disciples anymore. He just goes to the bow of the ship, looks at the storm, and he says, Kazunta. And I know that they that when they taught us in the Pentecostal charismatic apostolic Baptist Methodist, no dust at all church. When they taught us that you gotta rebuke your storm in the name of Jesus. 
Well, how can Jesus rebuke the storm in his own name? He is the storm. God is not going to fight against himself. But what we fail to understand here is a powerful, a powerful message in this that God wants to show us that when he stepped to the bow of the ship, he did not just stop the storm, but he thanked the storm. Its assignment was over. It's interpreted as peace, be still. Shalom. Uh-huh. Shalom, Shabbat, Shalom. He gave the storm a Sabbath. Your time is up. Why would he give the storm a Sabbath? It finished his assignment. It can't overdo God. It can't kill God. The storm don't have the power to kill God. You do believe Jesus is God, right? He's still God. Now watch, watch this. He rises to the storm. Kazunta is what? That's it. Chinese. God bless you. That's what he says to the song. God bless you. And then Rick, he, when the storm lays down, he goes back to the disciples. And I could imagine what the conversation meant before they got off the boat. And this is my vivid imagination. He says, boys, they don't have any motorboats. Boys, they don't have any ships. Uh-huh. We don't have no way of accelerating because what you fail to realize is I'm not only teaching you a lesson about the ocean, but there's a man trapped in some tombs over here with 6,000 demons in it. And if I don't get to him quick, fast, in a hurry, the devil is going to kill him, y'all in here. <clears throat> so you know what God does? He calls forth the storm to use the storm as the means of acceleration. Gonna preach in a minute, and so the storm carried them up to the other side so God could fulfill his will concerning that man. So he looks at the storm when it's done his job and fulfilled his assignment. He said, Thank you. I dare you to look at every storm from here on out and say, Thank you, thank you, storm. Why you weren't sent to kill me, you weren't sent to destroy me. Thank you. Look, Sorry, it's over. All right, sit down. We get ready to go. And so, when he gets out the boat, there was a man over there with 6,000 demons. I don't understand how in the world could one man get 6,000 demons in it. And the, and the sad story is, I feel bad this now. I said the sad story is that when you understand the, praise God, the tomb of Gadareans. The tomb of Gadareans is, a, is, praise God, a place to where it's almost like a sane asylum. It's where they put all the crazy people when they don't want to deal with them anymore. So they put them in the graveyard and say, we're going to leave you here because you're going to die anyway. I like the fact that when men give up on things, that God will take it up and say, if you don't want it, I'm going to bless it. What one man's trash is another man's treasure. How many people in this room that one man throws you away, but God had him to throw you away? Because your poor ass was coming. Shake your neighbor, high five and say, neighbor, let me ride just a little bit. Jeremy, don't push me too hard. And, but come on, but just ride me slow. I don't like to go too fast. But have you ever had, have you ever had someone in your life that have thrown you away and they said to you that you're no good for me they had you feeling real down had you feeling real depressed they had you feeling like you was about to commit suicide and now you got low self esteem but when you were about to throw in the towel you can go I feel the hooper coming now I say here come God I'm so glad he loves me. Is there anybody 
in the temple tonight. You know that God loves you. I'm so glad that when my daddy didn't want me, I'm so glad that when my church wanted to throw me out, I'm so glad when they ostracized Slow it down, son. When they ostracized me and didn't want nothing to do with me, John, he'll raise you up right in the devil's face. Won't he do it? Clap your hands and say it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 God. So, my God, I feel like preaching now. So, this man that was in these tombs, he was left for dead, y'all. I said he was left for dead, y'all. But when he saw Jesus, oh, when he saw him get off the boat, when he saw him, the Bible says, the Bible, the Bible says that he ran to him and he fell down and began to worship the Lord. I come to tell somebody that the devil don't have that much power, y'all, to keep me when I see the Lord. Ain't he I'm getting happy now. I'm going to take my seat in a minute. But I hear the Lord say that you don't have to have a degree behind your name. You don't have to have a whole lot of money. You don't have to have a whole lot of friends as long as you keep your worship. Come on, somebody. Oh my goodness. And say your worship is gonna be your hand. It's gonna bring you out. Worship the Lord with me. And let us have your neighbors and keep worshiping. Whatever you do. Don't stop worshiping. Whatever you do. Yeah. Don't you stop worshiping. Is that all right? So, God, I feel the Lord. So, this man bent down. <laughs> And he start to worship y'all. And he start worshiping. The demons didn't leave. But it gave me my mind back. I'm so glad that I got my mind back. I'm not cutting myself no more. I'm not sleeping with the wrong people. I, 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 wish, I wish I had somebody that would praise God with me. Let's just see it. Hey, yeah. Listen, hey, I'm getting happy now. He worship until the demon loses his grip. He worship until the warlock was in his own spell. He worship. Yeah! Yes, you did! Ah! Elder Ford, can I hum? Can I holler like that? Yeah! Don't you hit it? 
them like that. I said, hey! I feel like I, I feel like I'm about to go crazy up here. I feel like I'm about to snap, tackle a little bit. How far your neighbor? I say neighbor. Thank you. 
Till God be the chance to get free, baby. If you've been battling in your mind, you got to dance before all these people. And so God, the Bible said he fell down, run to this altar, and just start praising him. Yeah.
need you to just do me a favor. Who will do me a favor? Brother, do me a favor. You'll do me a favor. Who will stand and say, do me, you'll do me a favor? Go out there and find somebody. And bring them to Jesus. Yeah. Listen, listen to me. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be easy. Make up your mind. I'm telling you, I see greatness. I see greatness. Don't you quit. Promise me, promise me. Is she in church? You go to this church. She'll go to this church. Get here. I don't care how. Just you got to 
force your way to get here, fight through it, get in the atmosphere, and get your faith developed. God got something great in store for you. Do you have children? You have children? How old is your youngest? Six. The hand of God is upon that young baby. That's the reason why I think. I can't see whether it's a male or a female. Don't say nothing, but I see something turbulent trying to happen, like behavioral type stuff, or either some type of something introverted type situation. The reason why that individual is like that is because the hand of God is upon them. And your mantle, because you haven't missed your assignment, it's not over for you. And when God is going to birth in you, it's going to hit your household. And that last child, my God, my God, that last child, call the name for me. Call the name. Shannon? Jaden, yes, Lord. That last child is going to be a miracle worker. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I feel it. I feel warfare. I feel warfare and bondage in your house. I feel it. I feel the struggle of it. Can I ask y'all a favor? This is what we do at our church. This is what we do at our church. We don't judge nobody. I'm That's talking about right. nobody. Right. We bless them and don't care what they do. Turn around for me, baby. Baby girl, this is your father talking. Get your offering. Put it at her feet, whatever God give you. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Just put it, place it at her feet. Mm. You're going to leave here blessed today. You're going to leave here blessed today. Do you have a cash app? Bishop, you know I heard you five times. Didn't even respond to it. Do you have a cash app? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. Lay it on her feet. Mm -hmm. It will always be like you got me. You got us. Jesus. It's turning your favor. It's turning your for me. Yes, sir. Listen here. Listen to me, listen to me, then I'm going to get out of your way. But listen to me. That's what I'm talking about, being a blessing. Now you turn around, I want to talk to you for a minute. This money has an anointing with it. No matter what you do with it, it's going to activate your future in two ways. It's going to bless you or it's going to destroy you. You don't get money from an apostle. You gotta do right by what God gives you. You hear me? Even if you fall to your face, this is your blessing. This is no stress, no strings attached to it. And listen, I've been hurt. I know what this is like. You, uh, you didn't think that God was gonna do this. I love doing this stuff right here. God manifesting himself to people that need to believe again. Mm -hmm. Come on, praise God for doing that. Hallelujah. So what you gonna do, you gonna get you gonna stop that crying. And you're gonna get your money before somebody steals it. Pick it up, sis.
It's my season to be gay. It's my season to be blessed. Mean, sister lady in the black with the stripes on it lift your hands to me I can't explain what I see I tried to get in the back before I told you this but I kept looking at you and I kept seeing an iron like an iron like God is getting the wrinkles out of your house stop saying no to it Because God's going to make your home wrinkle free. It's going to free you up to obey Him. And He's not giving you the spirit of fear nor timidity. You're closer to ministry than what you think you are. In this season, you don't have to be qualified. You got a yes in your spirit from way back yonder. God say walk in it. But I do see, I, hey, 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 woo, don't crazy. But what I do see, I see an unexplainable miracle. I just saw iron. I don't know if it's a loved one. I don't know if it's finances. I don't know if it's money that you need for a business deal. But I see something being ironed out. Children, I see something being worked out. The wrinkles and all the kinks. I see it being worked out. I have no idea. This one, God's got me clueless, but it won't let me leave this pulpit. To, I say to you that iron is in your house. I don't know what They're going to go, you remember that preacher said the iron was in my house? Six months later, you're going to know what that's all about. Hey, listen. If you're not too jealous and you're not too mean, let's praise God with her. She didn't expect this. Oh, he's all 
world this yeah. evening. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God. Now let's dinner downstairs for our guests. Let them have dinner first. Greater St. James, we're going to take care of them. They will go after. We know the protocol. Tomorrow, this continues at 12 noon. We have vegan set up for you guys. I'm a vegan too, so I understand where you're at. So, um, I'm not a pescatarian, I some fish. But um, I understand where you're at. So, we got food for you set up. Um, tomorrow, 12 noon, Sam. And then we have the clothes giveaway really after that, after service tomorrow morning. I'm sorry, I said it one time. Right, so that's tomorrow. If you're in the area or know somebody that needs, make sure we get them involved in our activity tomorrow. This is about helping this community. Amen? Amen. Um, also, we want to uh, remember Sunday morning. Sunday school starts at 9.30 sharp. Now, if you're missing Sunday school in Greater St. James, you're missing a treat. Amen. We have a good Sunday school here. I'm going to ask our superintendent to stand up. Yeah. Sister Morgan Young. She has that organized and well-oiled, and we have a good time in Sunday school here. So if you're missing that, you are missing a treat. And I'm listening right now, you cannot make it without God's Word. You need teaching, amen? We're going to have uh, the other four come up with the report of thanks, and then we're going to move forward from there. And the tent you see out there, he blessed us to put, came and put the tent up, him and some guys, and he didn't charge us anything for that tent. God is so good. And we are so grateful to him. Also, he said we can keep it as long as we want. So we ain't gonna arrive us. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for this great dynamic uh, couple. Okay. And we definitely cannot pay you. Excuse my town, but we've been working all week. We can't pay you for that. Those awesome words, but we want to say we appreciate you. And that vegan food is for them downstairs. But church, we still have food for you as well, so go downstairs afterwards and pick up your box. <laughs> this for the first lady. Put up the tent, put up the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm looking at her around there and just stay with We just want to say thank God. We thank God for y'all coming out with some great beer to support your pastor. So um, don't leave without your food. Now we're not cooking this vegan food for y'all. <laughs> Y'all on that thing is soon to be over with my son and all <laughs> I seen him on the thing preaching about food. <laughs> oh God. It was so funny. I was like, wow. And I thank God. I just want to say thank God. Continue to do what you do. Stay with Amen. Amen. Before we get back to the preacher. I just want to say a lot of what he said tonight, we've been in that season here. And it's almost as if you've been walking in this pulpit. Some of the faith things you spoke about are happening right in this church. And, 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 am I right, St. James? We've seen some stuff happen in the last three to four weeks that shouldn't have happened in here, but God worked it out for us. And if Dr. Massey were here, she could tell the truth to her. But if it just five and stuff, she could not walk for over a year. Am I lying, St. James? For over a year, she could not walk. She went from walker to wheelchair and stumbled and couldn't get together. 
when God spoke to me one Sunday morning, he said, Help. Sister Young, I'm not her legs. People rolled their eyes. People threw stones. You know how, you know how the devil going to do now. Can, can we just be honest, St. James? People rolled their eyes and threw stones. But I said, stay true to what God said. Sister Young, I, I, I followed the instructions. One Sunday morning, her husband got up and said, Dr. Nash, it's time to walk. She walked around that altar. Yes, she did. But now see, there were some instructions given with the, with, with the anointing. I said, hold her a certain way. Come on, let's go. Come on. I said, now here's some witnesses. I'm going to tell you what, what God told me to tell you. Everyone could not touch her for a season. That's right. Only certain ones I assigned, only you, you, and you can put your hands on her. When she walks, only you can touch her. They try to do it their way. I'm telling you how God did this thing now, because we're sitting in this house. And it didn't work. She stumbled. I said, God, I'm sitting in the house. I, I, was, I went to yours. I can't say nothing. I'm, at, I'm not in position. I got to sit here and watch. I said, God, that's not what you said to do. I said, you got to fix this yourself. Because I told them she would walk and God wanted the glory out of her life. She said, the doctors couldn't fix this. I said, God got to fix this one. So when they got in position and did it right, the way God said do it, she began to walk. And she's been walking ever since. Come on, say, am, am I right about it? Now, I'm telling you, she could not walk for over one year. She struggled with the walker. She struggled with the wheelchair. And it seemed like whenever she got better, she only got worse. But when God got in line, and we got in line with God, so everything you talk about, that face situation happened in this church. And it wasn't no year ago. It happened within the last month. Come on, St. James. Am I telling the story? As I tell you, God, what I said, look at, I said, all I had said was, I'd run her legs. I'd run her legs. And then sometimes we forget. I said, go back and run her legs again. Go back and do it. Because you know, the enemy is to make you forget stuff. But once we got on track and God began to get glory, she began to walk. The last I heard, she's still walking. Now, the doctor said use a stick, but I believe she throws a stick to the side. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Her legs were not supposed to be on the head of her body. But when God got involved in all of this, what I'm saying is, I thank God that she said confirmation on what God has said.
did something Jesus. for me. Let's Jesus. give it up for your pastor. Amen. This has been nothing short of being amazing. But I, I, y'all said three weeks. Ever since she announced, she said, Pastor Elder Ford said, Pastor Reggie, would y'all come and uh, let's do a tent crusade? It seemed like hell said, hmm? <laughs> and then when I got here, she was telling me, she could see it on my face, you know, and I could see it on hers. We've been fighting hell for a whole month or so. But I got good news. It just lifted. That iron is in your house. I see that iron in your house. Every time I look over your head, I see an iron. I don't know what that's all about. Y'all, make sure you get in touch with me. When she started crying and coming to the altar, you remember this church? No, where you going to church? I've been there before. Um, I've I seen that um, Pentecostal holiness. I'm just playing with you. Go ahead. like tonight to confirm. I ain't, I, this is my first time ever been to Justice Street. But I know they smoke a lot of reefer over here. They do that. They do. They're going to do that over here. I'm telling you, that's what they're going to do. They don't do nothing else. Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to roll one up, put it in the air. Amen. Fight spirits. Fellowship with y'all. This is amazing. Thank you, woman of God, for sharing it. Let's give God praise for the That's his life. Amen. Do me a favor. I want you to go down and grab your wife out that room and stand right there. Y'all got time? Y'all got five minutes? Look, she's smiling. She loves her man. That's what I like to see. Hold on, brother. Don't get her yet. Don't get her. Don't get her yet. Hold on, brother. She did. 
Jesus, smiling and shimmying. Come on down here. Turn and face the church. I'm introducing y'all to Pastor and First Lady. And I hope this is not out of order. Your apostles can wipe this right on off, okay? But I want to seal what I see. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. And it is so. It is so. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap it up. Give it up for them. Shame of my gift. Am I like this everywhere I go? Yeah. Ministers, am I like this everywhere? Yeah. Preachers and pastors, I'm like this. I love to see people smile because you release the right endorphins. You release the right hormones, the healing agents into your body, the oxygen that flows. It's a it's a it's a anatomy, physiology, medical type thing that's happening when you laugh. Because God said a merry heart do it good like a one, a cure. A medicine. That's the Bible. This man is a Lord. You know what? I, 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 I often, uh, when people serve their leaders, and those two have the heart of a servant. I don't know. It's almost like the baton is being passed. The baton is being passed. Hallelujah. I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can feel a few haters. Not him, Lord. Not him, Jesus. See, Saul had the position. But David was anointed for the seat. And every now and again, God will have somebody right there in that position while he's cultivating and stirring the next level of ministry. Are y'all here? Uh-oh, I done lost the room, but I'll feel somebody. Well, I'll do something wrong for me. Get the pop of it. Time to me go. They pimping, smoking weed. Next thing you know, they're going to start cutting and shoot. Come on. Get out of here. I just play my time. Everybody standing. Let's go. Please tell your pastor, uh, Elder Ford, please tell your mother, man, I hope that we were a blessing to y'all in these two days. I hope so. Let's tell your pastor. For me, thank you. I mean that from the bottom of, of my heart. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Vail family, for coming. I love y'all. Smiling faces. I love it. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the opportunity to minister. Come on, babe. We're going to close this out. Come on up here, my queen. Amen. Now, ho, ho, go back to your seat. I don't want to go get you like I told him. I want to come get you. Go on back down there. I want to see if you're going to shit me when I come. Exceeding joy 
to the only wise God, the only one, our Savior. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Shout amen. Listen, amen. love somebody, tell them I love you, Jesus, and a thing you can do about it. Come on. God bless you, love you tonight.